Hello guys, in this video we are talking about gases and if gases, then we definitely need to mention some balloons, right? So we are going to derive the ideal gas equation. But first, let's try to figure out what is an ideal gas. So an ideal gas is just a hypothetical gas that is composed of molecules which follow a couple of rules. First of all, there will be many randomly moving point particles. And these particles or molecules do not attract or repel each other. They just, you know, just move all around quickly or maybe slowly, but there is no attraction attraction. And the gas molecules will also take up no volume in case of an ideal gas. This simplifies our equation. Now, if we are talking about gases, we have to take into account four properties. These are pressure, temperature, the amount of gas, which is usually given in a number of moles. This is given with lowercase n and the volume. So let's start first with pressure. What is pressure? Pressure equals force over area. Now let's take this balloon, this green one, big one right here. So let's say that the area is the inside of the balloon and the force is actually given by particles that move around in this balloon. Now, as they move around, they may bump into the wall of the balloon and then just apply force on the wall, on the inside wall of the balloon. Now, how fast are these particles are moving? Well, the velocity is the kinetic energy, right? The average kinetic energy, because we cannot measure exactly each particle, how fast it is moving, but we can measure the average. We have a gazillion particles, right? So we are working with averages. And the, the average kinetic energy, kinetic energy is basically equal to the temperature. We can define it in many different ways. That's why I use the squiggly line. But in short, if the temperature is high, your molecules will move really, really fast. If the temperature is low, the molecules will move really, really slow. Now, my question is, if the particles move fast, what happens to the pressure? Will the pressure be high or will the pressure be low? Well, if the particles move very, very fast inside this balloon, they are going to bump into the wall of the balloon more often with higher force, right? So this means that faster particles, faster particles will give us higher pressure, right? Slower particles, will give us lower pressure. So because the average kinetic energy is given by the temperature, we can say that the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature, right? If the temperature is high, then the pressure will be high because the particles are moving fast. And when the temperature is low, the particles will be moving slow, so the pressure will be low. So pressure proportional to the temperature. Okay, what about the other variables? Let's say that I'm going to keep the temperature and the volume constant and change the number of particles in my first two balloons. So here I'm going to have three, four, let's say five particles, just zooming around. And in my second balloon, I'm only going to have two particles. What happens to the pressure as I go from the first balloon to the second balloon? Well, in the first balloon, the pressure will be higher, right? Because I have more particles that are hitting the walls of the balloon, right? So this means that the pressure is actually directly proportional to the number of particles or to the number of moles.
Now, let's take another scenario. Let's call this balloon three and balloon four. Let's keep the temperature the same and the number of particles the same. So those are both constant. And now I'm going to have a large volume with let's say three particles zooming around and a smaller volume with the same three particles zooming around with the same speed, with the same velocity at the same temperature. What happens to the pressure as the volume decreases? Well, as the volume decreases, I'm going to have the particles bumping into the wall of the balloon more often, so the pressure goes up. This means that the pressure is actually inversely proportional to the volume. And on the previous slide, we learned that the pressure is actually directly proportional to the temperature. So we can take these three expressions and put them together into one. So the pressure will be directly proportional to the temperature multiplied by the number of moles multiplied by one over volume which also means that the pressure equals to some kind of constant multiplied by the temperature, multiplied by the number of moles, multiplied by one over volume. If I define this constant as R, which is going to be the so-called gas constant, then my equation changes for the following. P equals R, T n 1 over V. And I can multiply both sides with V from where I'm going to get P times V equals rearranging the RTN into N R T and we have the ideal gas equation. Okay, I hope this is familiar and I hope this makes sense. Maybe you have seen in books Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law. So they basically tell us the same picture that I just showed you on the previous slides. Based on Boyle's Law, the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure, the volume is proportional to the temperature, and the volume is proportional to the number of moles. As we combine those three proportionalities, we are going to get to this expression, which is going to give us that the volume equals to some kind of constant multiplied by nt over p, and if you add the proportionality constant, the gas constant r, we are going to arrive to this expression multiplying both sides. We are going to give us the same PVNRT. Now, do you need to memorize Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law? No, I'm actually going to show you in the next video how to use only the PVNRT to solve any kind of ideal gas question. To be honest, this might be a little bit funny, but I'm pretty sure even if I live to 100 and I don't remember much, I will definitely remember PV equals NRT. This is just so much ingrained in my mind. Okay, I hope the equation makes sense. See you in the next video.